Okay, so this is the podcast. We are back in our spiritual home. It's a Monday night. It is the club. It's where we belong, and we're bringing you lots of joy and cheer despite us losing another game. Um, the club, of course, is brought to you in association with Reds Bet, a betting site tailor made for Liverpool supporters. Reds Bet aims to share half the net profits with Liverpool supporters and fan causes, so no matter what, the fans end up a winner. Check out the odds on redsbet.com or download the Reds Bet app, and remember, share the glory and gamble responsibly. Where the eagles fly. On a mountain high. Okay, excellent yeah. stuff. Don't let uh, players up where we belong. Lovely. Right, that's enough. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm not just, getting there. I can't wait. Anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we have a couple of nice specials from Reds better along during the week as well that we can push on the timeline because <coughs> we love specials. We do love the specials. We do love the specials. specials. Mainly because nice. they're our sponsor and we are yep. paid to promote them. Well, it's not even that. It's like I do have the odd bet, and I don't mind using Reds Bet to do the bets. I bet on Reds Bet tonight, and I don't want to. You know what? Because some people like betting and some people don't, so I don't yeah. want to make it all about the betting. But do for those who do, do did you win anything? I didn't. I backed. <laughs> I put fifty quid on Liverpool to win tonight, and uh, I'm quite happy I lost it. No, because <laughs> <laughs> they're going to have this shitty cup. Uh, right lads look I want to cover briefly 10 minutes because we've done a lot uh, of talking during the match itself yeah. um, but yeah. we're, we're back um, the, we're out of the FA Cup again the fourth round um, outside I think we, we beat Everton in the fourth round last year and got knocked out in the second round didn't we yeah West Brom home yeah West Brom home whatever it is um, but that's not, it's a makeshift side it's quite clearly a makeshift side given the issues we have at centre back and it gets worse when Lovren um, decides that he's going to pick up an injury as well to go along with the rest of the centre backs um, and he's gone off but the main positive that came out tonight is that young kid Hoover at the at, at centre back yeah a stunning performance even yeah no absolutely he was he was, he was genuinely top notch um, I, I can't remember a young lad coming into the team and looking so composed. And it's it's not one of those positions that you can play and and just keep yourself out of trouble. Like Curtis Jones played tonight and was completely lost. Mm. And that's okay. He started you know, off lively, but he just went. Yeah, but yeah, he he drifted out of the game and never was able to get a foothold back on it. And and that's okay. And what I mean by that is, you know, he he's he's a young lad. He was getting an opportunity. You're not expecting a huge amount from him. But but Key Johnny H- uh, Hover doesn't. Um, I'm going to keep on changing his name throughout the course Keanu. of this show. Keanu. Keanu Hover. Keanu. Just Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Neil Fisk. Neil Fisk. So Neil Fisk um, didn't start the game and That's comes on, man. which is even harder again in a, in a situation like that. To come on at centre half in a game like that and make your debut, and he just looked. I'm not going to say he looked the finished article because the finished article is is Virgil Van Dijk. So, but he looked. So calm. He looked like he was in control the vast majority of the time. Even when Mignolet tried to really fuck with his head in the first half. Or just and being put there. Him, just put him into as much trouble as he possibly could. The young lad still took the ball in, looked for a pass, tried to find his way out of trouble. And in the second half, I thought he was really, really good. Like, really impressive. Mm. And you're looking at a kid like him thinking, if he can stay on the right track, if he can avoid injury... That could be a real, real prospect. But like, let's be realistic about this. He's not going to be a prospect over the next two years because he'll still only be eighteen at that yeah. point. You're not putting a seventeen-year-old into your side, really. You don't know unless he's unless he's a, unless he turns into a phenomenon. Well, you, you look at, you look like um, there's a couple of the lads on the trippers that go on about this lad, the lit uh, at Ajax, who's yeah. eighteen. You had Joe Gomez, which was eighteen when he broke through. Mm. Um, but that's what I'm saying. This kid's only sixteen. Yeah, no, he's only sixteen. You know but I mean? like. Listen, the old fucking thing is if, if you're, you're good enough, enough you're, you're old enough. enough sort of thing. For me, you're right in what you're saying. He was playing a position tonight that you can't really hide. Yeah. And especially the way we were playing tonight, he had no fucking chance to hide. No. Because the, the pressure was on. very little protection. The people up front didn't hold on to the ball. It was coming back very quickly. But for me, he has a confidence about him, but it's not cocky. No, you know, no, he, no. He's, he's not. confidence. He's sure in himself. He was letting Wolves players get close to him and he was releasing the ball. He was strong. He there trusts was one, himself there was one on the, the ball. second half. There, oh, Steve got up and nearly applauded because he he gets done through his legs and yeah. he, he he makes that pace up, takes the ball off the man, beats another man, beats Goes another past man, two more, yeah. and then actually plays a nice ball to, to Shakiri down yeah, the right hand side. Yeah, was that Shakiri on the right hand side? Very yeah. very promising. The man of the match for Liverpool by an absolute mile. Yeah, him. I think I think I think you'd you'd be looking at. It. There wasn't many who who stood out. Origi gets a nice goal. Fabinho was very solid at at uh, at centre half. No one in midfield was worthy of of comment, really, apart from negatives. 
Um, and and you look at Moreno, he was his usual mad self. Um, and then Camacho, he was okay. Camacho was solid. Um, didn't really offer much anywhere. You know, didn't make any real mistakes. Didn't really. He started brilliantly. I thought he cut, he cut out a couple of balls. He tried to get forward with them. But you have to be looking at the experienced players, Steve. Oh, hundred percent. Sorry, I'm like, not. I'm not wrong. knocking these young I'm lads fan, at I'm all. I'm a fan of Milner. Um, he walks hard. He gets stuck in. He makes a mistake there tonight. Fair enough. He makes a mistake. You know that happens. But for me, Sturridge was just completely like he didn't look like he wanted to be a Liverpool player playing there tonight. And you know you can't really. I wouldn't judge. I would. Make exception for the youngsters and probably Keita. Keita, like I've seen people saying, you know, his form might be a worry or this and you know. Keita's in a Keita's in a team there tonight that Milner doesn't. You see that that sub you're saying affects that Hoover comes on and he doesn't affect them. It actually affects the team more because they're worried about this young lad. Not just that, but, but it don't affected need to. the whole but shape. But you, yeah, but you watch Milner trying to drop in beside him and help him, which he vacates that space in yep. midfield, and Kate is trying to cover all that. And Shakiri's meant to be the third man there, and he's trying to find space in, in different places but it just got all very disjointed from the sub but not because of the young lad that come on because the other players worried about him when they really shouldn't they should have worried about themselves and it's probably the first time this season that I can think of that we played two up front as well so so the team was a little bit more static yeah and, it was just, and it, it was just it was just disjointed and but it was I'm, two up front Steve for me that didn't play well individually and didn't look to play as a as, as a partnership. A, as a partnership either. Either. Yeah, no, I agree. They're playing their own game, which was completely alien to the way Liverpool play football. Listen, the, the positives are that it was just a cup game and that it has no impact. And that's that's where we're at as at, at this club. You know, Premiership and Champions League. We we are at a level now where we're expecting to compete compete in both of those competitions. We don't have a squad big enough that you can say let's go after all four competitions. It's no, just I, not I, realistic. I, I, I disagree. I think if you don't have as many injuries as we have at the moment. Right. Oh Ma- yeah. Primarily, like, but that's really, a prime what, example that our squad really, is not what big really, enough. What, what really weakens our team there is the fact that we've lost three centre backs. Any team, any team in the Premier League that loses three centre backs is going to have to put out a makeshift team, n- no matter what game it is. And I'd still, I'd still go as far when we talk about the Brighton game. We're pretend, we're going to have to look at a makeshift defence on Saturday again, purely because we've lost Lovren, we've lost Matip we've lost Gomez. I don't think you can call it a makeshift shift defence if you're if you're slotting Fabinho in beside Van Dijk and then but he's not a centre back. Yeah, but it's not a, a makeshift defence is probably pushing it a little bit. Like you've got your first choice left back, your first choice right back, your goalkeeper, your best centre half in the world and then you're putting quite somebody who performed quite quite capably against a full strength Wolves side tonight. Fabinho didn't look out of sorts too much with a 16 year old beside I definitely, him. I definitely play Fabinho if it, for me, if it was Fabino or Risk Matip, I'd definitely go with Fabinho. No, I don't think I don't think we'll Matip's going to be ready. We'll talk about him in a minute. The, the biggest concern, lads, I'll, I'll come back to it. We spent fifty-seven million on this guy, um, and he's he's he hasn't approached anywhere near the form he's shown. At Waited a season for him as well. And I know even Klopp has sort of hinted at maybe a a, a, a bit of a, a you know frustration. It, 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 not so much a frustration, but probably just a bit of a disappointment that he hasn't been able to get up to the same pace or confidence level as he had when he was at Leipzig but again tonight Keita doesn't look anything more than just an average to good footballer you know what was disappointing about Keita tonight was his his touch his control his ability on the ball none of that was put under a, a massive amount of pressure except for what he brought on himself so so he tended to push the ball out a yard a yard and a half in front of him rather than keeping it close and, and invited pressure on. Almost like, I won't say what Emery Chan used to do, but remember Chan used to have this thing about holding on to the ball until somebody came onto him so he, could, so, so, so he could hold them off and show how strong he was. Mm. And and Keita tonight was nearly like, he wanted to push that ball out a little bit further in front of him to, to nearly draw in the opposition. Rather than just, he could have done with going out there tonight and playing everything simple mm. and just building his confidence and getting a good 90 minutes under his belt and just just play his own game, and and even if you looked at it and said, okay, he didn't have a major impact on the match, whatever it might be, he could have done with just going out there, playing his own game, getting a good solid ninety minutes under his belt, and saying, okay, now give me some games in in the first team. I'm going to defend him a little bit. I am, I because I look up players there tonight, and 
I felt sorry for him in the midfield. I genuinely did. I felt that he was in there and he didn't know whether to stick or twist. He didn't know whether to go forward. He definitely wouldn't. He didn't want to gamble playing off the front men because he wasn't. They weren't. I get you on that. I get you, know you on I mean? that. So I think he, it was a bit of a confusing night for him. And we've re- we've all read about Klopp brings players in and he tries to coach them into a certain way of playing. The way we play tonight is alien to what Klopp yes, tries to do. Absolutely. So if 100%. you have a player coming in to play and he plays for Agnes like a certain way, Toy Bay. And we're trying to get him to play type B, and then we did that today was fucking I don't know what it was. Type do you know, F. Do you know what I mean? It was it was just completely off the scale as the way we play. I I I felt a little bit sorry for him. Don't get me wrong, if if we'd have played that tonight and we'd have been on top and our defence didn't have to be changed and we played the likes of a Salem, Firmino, Mane, you know, and he's still had a bad and game. he still had a bad game. I'd be saying it passed him by a little bit. But watching that game tonight for me, Keita looked as if where am I meant to be here? Milner keeps dropping 30 yards behind me. You know, Shakiri's drifting off to the right here and I'm stuck in the middle of the park trying to do it. Uh, nearly on his own in the middle of the park. I'm going to defend him a little <clears> bit. But we all, we waited a year for Keita and we all expect him to come in and blow this league apart. Um, I'm still of the opinion in the next four months I think Keita will start to really show his value because I think he's a very, very good footballer. And I think once he gets into the rhythm of the way we play, and I mean the players that will play on Saturday, not that tonight. I don't think there's much worry over them. That's my opinion on it. Yeah, no, listen, that, that's that's fair enough. Like, what I would say is, we also have to remember the other side of it, and this is not me writing them off. I think there's still a long way to go. I think even if he had a full bad season, I'd still be looking at him thinking, during the summer, you know, full full uh, year at the club, and then go again next season, and he could have an excellent season. Because, let, let's be honest, it is, you know, for most players, it is season to season. A lot of players can blow hot and cold. Really, only the top, top elite level stay at that. And that's why they are in an elite level, because they don't dip off. Okay, but, 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 no, but, hang on a second. Just one thing I'm saying. We have to remember the amount of success we've had in the transfer market and how many of the players we've brought in have, have hit the mark for us. And eventually, someone that we fully expect to work out is not going to work out. And that could be him. Normally, people say it's a 50-50 chance whether a transfer works or not. In the last two seasons, two and a half seasons, nearly all of our transfers yeah, we're well have worked above average, we are. We're, well, we're, we're yeah. so far above average. And that might just mean that Naby Keita, either it just doesn't work for him or he loses confidence in himself. It's not, a, it's not an ability thing a lot of times with players. It's, it's a lack of confidence and, and it just doesn't work out for them. Sorry, Phil, go on. What were you going to say? No, for me, look, you said something there that it's rare except for elite players to play season upon season and have form season upon season. My, my concern is that we spent 57 million on a guy that we believed was an elite level player, all right, and who had come off the back of two exceptional seasons for Leipzig, had a little dip last season, but clearly his mind had moved to Liverpool that given the deal was there and he was, he was playing one more season there. You can understand that. But I'm concerned because he's really struggling to show the form that he had at Leipzig and he's not even shown glimpses of the form he's had at Leipzig mm. and you know we use uh, the, the, I find it one of the most frustrating things when I hear about these players who are great in training I've heard, seen many players wear a Liverpool jersey who you hear he's absolutely unbelievable in training just wait till it clicks from on the pitch and in some cases it never does yeah and that's what and I'm saying and maybe it won't the, for the him the growing risk here is that the more it goes on the more pressure he'll find himself under to deliver the f- more pressure you put yourself under the, the harder it becomes to become the player that you necessarily be. It, and it doesn't necessarily convert to being the player that we expect them to be or working out. The, the realistic thing is, if you can make 60% of transfers work for you, you're, you're doing you have well. an incredible hit rate. Yeah. So we're looking at our transfers in the summer, and at the moment, the only one that hasn't worked for us yeah. is Keita. But you're looking at two two summers, and the only one that hasn't worked is Keita. And and you're looking at it and saying we signed a, a an elite level or what we believed was an elite level player for fifty odd million, expecting them to come in and hit the ground running. Similarly, last summer we signed an eight million pound Scottish left back from a relegated team who nobody gave a hope to and was thinking why the fuck are we buying him mostly, mm. and now he's widely regarded as probably the most in form left back in the world. We are buying him because we didn't get Ben Chilwell. Yeah. That's basically what it was last so season. We, we've, um, and we, we've bought him and, and he's now an elite, he is an elite level yeah, left he is. back. Completely he's, agree. He's the best left back in the league and if anyone thinks he's not, there's something wrong with him and that's not rose tinted glasses or anything like it. He's, he's unbelievable. He's in the top three in, in, in European I'll football. ask you a question, Steve. Go for it. Where is, what is Keita's best position on the pitch in your opinion? <laughs> it, uh, okay. Actually, I'll, I'll rephrase that. 
When you seen Kate the signing for Liverpool, where did you see him playing on the pitch? Um, my opinion of that changed after we signed Fabinho. So, so I thought I didn't foresee Gino Ronaldo having a season like this, mm. and I thought to myself, I thought we would see a Milner or a Henderson. I thought we would see a Fabinho screening. I thought we would see a Milner or a Henderson in alongside that holding midfielder to act as the bridge. Mm. And I thought we'd see Naby Keita being that most advanced sort of third midfielder mm. as the one who was who was arriving into the box late or making those runs and, and getting eight, ten goals in a season. Mm. That's what that's what the the Leipzig Keita and I didn't see much of him. Like, uh, like what the Leipzig Keita was a box to box. No, was I know. Playing, what, I playing know four three three, and he was he was the one of not the one that sat. He was the one that went box to box, either picking the ball up at a guy who was sitting deep like a Fabinho, and then breaking through the lines, and then playing a key pass. I understand I'll, I'll that. What, you, what I'm saying is the assist. The that. assist. I'll tell you. I'll tell you when he played that the opening day of the season. He plays in in the system of the opening day of the season where Milner nearly plays off the right, when Alan played centrally and. Keita was just ahead of him, slightly drifting to the left. He linked with, linked him with Mane. Mane and Robertson that day. And he was breaking lines. He was beating people. He sets up, like you say, the assist for the assist. He does that in the first goal of the season. He, is, he assists Robertson, Hockey who plays assist. assist, Salah. Um, the ghost assist, or whatever they call it Hockey nowadays. Assist. XG assist. Um, Hockey assist. But I, I wouldn't, I'm, not, I'm not too fussed about him. I, I just... You have to allow him. He's, he's in the country four months. You know, he's... He's got five months or whatever it is. He's there's loads to come from him. Yeah, I don't I don't care. I don't care at the moment as long as we're winning games. He he can stay off form as long as he wants, as long as we're winning games. And and what I'm saying is you asked where I saw him. I was looking at the group of players we had, mm. and I didn't see him taking a box to box midfield role when we had when Aldum Henderson Milner there who We know what the to, issue is now. Yeah, we 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 Ultimately we've changed our shape. Yeah, and we have changed our shape because we've gone to this four-two-three-one to try and put Salah centrally. And mm-hmm. and I'm talking about during the summer. I was expecting our front three to stay mm-hmm. exactly as they were last season. And he's we not a ten. F- who? Kate? Kate? No, he's not. No, he's not. I, I think. I think this is. And this. this but is, is he pro- capable of being one of the two? If if it's him and Fabinho, is he capable of doing the role that Wijnaldum is doing at the moment? At the moment, from what I've seen, he could be. If you he hasn't been trusted. No, he hasn't at, been trusted at, to but do, at the he? moment, from what I've seen. In a defensive sense, no. Right. He hasn't got, he doesn't seem to have, since he signed for Liverpool, that tactical um, nous, for want of a better word. But like you could see, you know when, when Wolves broke us there in the second half and he looked around and Cater was still floating around instead of breaking his balls to cover, cover one of the Wolves yeah. players that was off to his left. And he saw him there and he still didn't, he didn't break his balls to go there. Whereas if you look at the, say when Yaldum and Fabinho when they're playing in there or Henderson and Fabinho when they're playing in there as soon as somebody breaks they're trying to break their balls to get to where it was and I suppose that was my biggest frustration with Henderson against the City game was that he was so slow to get to these players that were breaking around him whereas Fabinho when he came on he was able to cover that ground and and get to them so I look at it and say this is where the struggle for Keita is now he's not a 10 and he isn't necessarily going to get the box to box position that he craves which is the one he had at Leipzig because we seem to have moved away from the 4-3-3 formation I think a lot of aspects have changed mm. from, from what he th- from what everyone thought was going to happen Klopp included I think everything a lot has changed so he's come in there where he played in the 4-3-3 we play a slightly different 4-3-3 to the way Leipzig play I presume because I didn't watch a hell of a lot of them um, but then it's a 4-2-3-1 then he was playing out left you know a lot of things have changed from, I, like, it's just listen He's been all right. But we have, like you said, we've had injuries. If it comes down to it now where we're, we're into mid-January now and he, in the next two, three weeks, he kicks on a little bit. You're looking at, if you can get an extra 10, 15, 20% out of Keita, not top level, mm. but 10, 15, 20%, he'll make a difference again. And these, you know, him, the likes of him and other players that can come in and maybe deputise or just change things up a little bit. It's all right. It'll be all right. And, it, you know, Air 11 are as good as anyone in the league. But to have him at an extra 10, 15, 20%, I still can think. I still, I, I still think when we go back, uh, when, when you look at the, 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 the range of formations and, and what, the way we're setting up, I think Klopp's frustration is he was hoping to have Keita up and running and flying and, and league ready at this point. Oh, we tried. Well, yeah, we're at the second part of the Christmas and he's probably thinking to himself, his idea of 4 3 3 is potentially Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Keita mm. because you can let Wijnaldum and Keita play off the sides of Fabinho, mm. cover that inside left channel, cover the inside right channel and also break mm. and get forward. And then when he wants to go to 4 2 3 one he's able to bring Henderson in or Wijnaldum alongside Fabinho and then bring a more attack-minded like Shaqiri 
Firmino and Mane in behind Salah or move them around whichever way he wants to accommodate yeah. them. And there is probably that little bit that at the moment he's trying to fit Henderson and Wijnaldum into the same midfield when he goes 4-3-3. Three, three. And he's... I, you can, I, I felt anyway from the press conference... Klopp was probably overreaching to say that he's, he thinks he's a great player. You can sense the frustration that he's not where he wants him to be. And hopefully, hopefully, and I don't think there's a single Liverpool fan that wants to see a player fail. And I I'd lo- I want to see us spend £57 million and I want to see Keiza co- come good because the player that was at Leipzig was a stunningly brilliant midfielder in terms of the way he was playing for them and what he delivered for, for, for that club and the way he got them into the Champions League and had them challenging for titles. You know the year I mean? he stayed with them, though, he wasn't. No, but no. That, that was a player who'd, whose head was gone he was, at that stage. Was, so, so are we possibly... Sometimes it can be hard for a player to switch that back on, even when they get their move. So Because they've spent a full year slightly out of form, mm-hmm. not not knowing that they're moving on. Like, it might have been the worst thing for everybody that he stayed in Germany that year. Mm-hmm. And and didn't come when we actually paid the money for yeah. it. And you'd be you'd be fifteen, sixteen, seventeen months into p- progression rather than yeah, yeah. Well, I think you'd have a full proper season now, but I think you would have got that player who was on a high, got his move, went to us, and who knows how it would have went. But I can't imagine it would have went any worse than them. And I'm not saying it's been terrible, but I'm saying I think at worst he would have been average in last season. You know. Um, but listen, all we can do is wait and see. Like, uh, you'd be more concerned about someone like Adam Lallana, to be perfectly honest but with he you. He doesn't exist anymore. But this is what I'm saying. Like, uh, Klopp is out there today speaking about how he has literally never seen him in better physical shape um, and how he's, he's, he's in superb condition and then he's not in the squad tonight because he's picked up a knock. Slight knock, yeah. And it's a knock enough to that's, stop him playing. And that's that's Adam Lallana's Liverpool career all over, isn't it? That's, in Adam a nutshell. La- yeah, and Adam Lallana now reminds me of Daniel Sturridge from about two years ago. They need to go. Where his confidence in his body is completely gone. Every little Sturridge. knock. Sturridge and Lallana. Did they say, both need to go say, in the summer. Now. No, you, you said you reminds, he, he he reminds me. He reminds me. Sorry, he reminds me. He just he heard does, a key word and jumped he, in. He no, no, no. I, I, no <laughs> he does remind me. Uh, Sturridge. Yeah, it's I Sturridge. Yeah. I actually want to, I want to use this to lead into something, the, the, the next segment of the podcast, right? And, and what you're saying is Sturridge and Lallana need to go. Now, there's a, a body of thought that's out there because Lallana didn't got, suddenly got injured again. <laughs> and again. And again, as he does. Um, I managed to get injured just before the game when Klopp was saying he was in great shape and he's trying to fit him into the team somehow. Um, and then Gee, the same, wasn't the same, no, the same thing's happened. Discussed. If he's gone, <laughs> if he's gone, hang on. Echo. <laughs> if he's gone, and Origi, Hello. Origi Hello. seems to be on the verge of a move as well. Yeah. Right. And we're talking about well, get rid of storage as well. Whether it's now or in the summertime. Yeah. Then we have to be looking at the top third of the pitch. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But the the top third of the pitch probably should have been looked at this summer, and. It was either that Klopp didn't want too much movement in the squad or he didn't, he wasn't able to get his hands on the player that he wanted or he wasn't sure who he wanted that, that we didn't bring somebody in. Because I think if he went into this season relying on Dominic Solanke, Origi and Daniel Sturridge and Klopp does have a, you know, Klopp has a job to do where he has to play up assets of the club as well. He has to talk them up and say, you know, Daniel's in a great place. Daniel Sturridge hasn't been great this season. He's come on in a couple of games and looked all right. He scored a lovely goal against Chelsea. And apart from that, for me, his input has been negligible. Mm. You know, Chelsea he, away, PSG header at home. But, but I'm not me, talking about even goals, Gav. I'm talking about his input in games. There has been, it's been minimal. And to think that we're one injury from that front three away from having to play him, he massively, massively changes the dynamic of a front three with him and the team. And it, it's not changes it in a different way. I mean, he massively reduces the quality of our front three by bringing him he in. He massively reduces the dynamism of our front three. But the, the quality as well, player. because... I, I, quality on the ball, I think he's quite good. Like tonight, I've, I've, I've lashed him tonight because, you, you know, like what we've said already, you wouldn't judge the youngsters on this tonight, but to, to watch a senior player go around like that tonight, not sprint, not chase... Not being able to trap a ball, hold a ball, bring players into play. Tell the young lad that's playing beside him, Arigi, he's still young, who's kind of out in the cold a little bit. Tell him, listen, you go here and I'll do this. There was none of that tonight. They were all playing their own game. But you have to try to balance it with what you would like to see. Course. And what Klopp Course. you think would do. Now, for me, regardless of Klein or Lalana or Solanke or anything, I'm of the opinion, if you're in a position that you're in right now, going into January, 
nail a fucking transfer now. Nail one now, bring him in in January, he gives you that extra bump, and you go for it. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It, it shows you me in business to others. Now, you know, everyone, and Phil will definitely go back to Tino Esprit <laughs> around 97, I think it was, when, the, when he went to Newcastle, and they were flying, and it all came off the rails. It wasn't only down to him. They just lost that bottle completely. But you'd have to, I don't know whether we'll do anything in, in January, because there was all this thing about ridiculous decision to let Klein go. Klein has started one game, sorry, two games this season. A League Cup game and a game against United that he admitted only adrenaline would get him through. And he's come on for a total of something like 15 minutes in two other games as a yeah. sub, right? He's immaterial to Liverpool's squad, no matter what way you want to put it. If he's fit for the last 18 months, I don't believe he has been. Klopp just doesn't like him, doesn't fancy him. He doesn't do what he wants him to do at right back. Solanke, it's a good deal, 19 million, maybe 25, probably buy him back for 30 if he proves it. If he doesn't, then he goes the way of Jordan Ive. We don't buy him back. It's it's a good deal. He hasn't played a minute for Liverpool this season. So for all these, oh, we're selling players. These are players that aren't playing for Liverpool. Yeah, I do you agree. know what I mean. So you don't know if Klopp has just gone. They're not happy. They're in the squad. They're not happy. They might be a bit fucking. Melty could or, be in someone's yeah. ear or Solanke could be in someone's ear. You might be worried Klein about the harmony of the squad. Yeah, someone's ear, and he just says, "No, I'm going to let them go, and I'm going to stay where I have." It's it's a difficult one to look at. For me, I would be looking at top end of the pitch, and I put someone in there and go. Look at us. Where, do you think we're good now? Where do you see what we have? I, I don't. I, I think we probably signed three players max in the summertime. I don't think you're going to see wholesale surgery. I do think some of the more established players may come into potential outs. Right. I think Henderson's time at the club is coming close. I worry for Milner. I don't. And Milner as well. I, I think don't Mil- think Henderson's Milner's time is coming close at all. I I'd, think actually, I'd actually say if, if Leeds get promoted, I think Milner goes back there in the summer. Potentially. Potentially. Possibly so, and it wouldn't be a bad move for him, but but I don't think Henderson's going anywhere. I don't, I don't, think, you, I don't think you'd lose Henderson and Milner in the one window, right? But I do think one of them potentially goes at the end at the end of the season. I and one of the centre-halves go as well. Well, definitely one of Lovren and Matip mm. goes. Yeah, definitely. And it's <laughs> no, I do, I, and it's probably that's likely a to be, quality and yeah. I, I, I think I think that's uh, it's probably going to be. I don't Matt. disagree. I, I I'm not I'm not being contrary. I think I think Matt probably is the one that's lo- most likely to go. Right, he's he struggles with the most with fitness. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember saying when we signed him, I remember saying my biggest worry is he's very injury prone. Yeah. I, remember, yeah, I remember lots of people telling me I was ridiculous and I didn't know what I was talking about. I it, think he suffers with the physical. You feel vindicated, really. Philip? Well, no, it just, it's just like. Listen, I'm not a fan of Matip. Never was. I think Matip is a good defender and I think he's potentially a better defender alongside Van Dyke than Lovren. Potentially, right? And I'm, and I'm not a Lovren basher by any means. I think I call it, I, I see a player and I call it what I see in front of me. I don't call an agenda or anything like that, with the exception of Milner, which I had to give, up, give in on. Yeah, yeah like, you had to you I did, I, I had, I had, not bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The good thing about you is you don't hold a grudge, Phil. That's what I always say about Mignolet, you. Mignolet, though, has managed to stick around, so it still hasn't done. But no, honestly, Hanson. I just think that with, with the Matip thing, if they can get somebody who's more reliable who's likely to challenge more so say with Gomez and Toby all the world no he's going to United Toby but why is he going to United I don't think we pay the wages for him at the age that he is he's 29 I know but that's what I'm saying to you I don't think we pay the wages that United will offer him I put him on a three year deal and I give Talk him the into wages the microphone, I give him a three year deal on the wages he wants and in two years time I tell him and I bring someone else in as a young understudy to a, uh, I get you more but I don't necessarily think he'll want to go for that deal Somehow. Yes, I tell you Well, if you have any ambition about yourself, you say, I've got a three-year deal at Liverpool. They could be the champions at the time. I've got Joe Gomez there. I feel I'm better than him. I feel I'm as, not as good as Van Dijk. No one is. But I feel like a partner of him. And it could work out great. Gomez gets 15 games. Yeah, for 25 season. million, it makes absolute perfect sense. If Don't we, get me wrong. It was 60 million. If you what I would not. say is we might have a chance if we actually go and win the league mm. this season. I think if we went and win, won the league this season and say, we want to try and retain the league and we want to go for the Champions League next season. Toby, four-year deal, bring you up to 33. Like, we've gone and spent, we've given James Milner a lot of money at whatever he was, 28, oh, yeah. 29 at the time that five he came. Five-year deal. Came mm. on a five-year deal. Why not? Toby Alderweireld and and why not give him a very strong deal and pay twenty five million the only for him in this is market? United will go bananas. United yeah. will go bananas this year. Yeah, yeah, but if they get, but they might get their hands on Koulibaly or they might get their hands on uh, Manolas. Even still, even still, I still think they they'll go for somebody who knows the league as well. Yeah. Look, I, I'm I'm not saying we shouldn't be able to challenge. I'm not saying we shouldn't. It all depends I, on what manager they bring in. Yeah, again, I don't know. Argentina will be there next year. I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of. Um, 
our transfers come out of the blue, like the Fabinho one. The Van Dyke one is telegraphed because the yeah, black blue we'd one want and all that We but don't the, want them. But the deal I, I don't is know. No longer Bill, they're we'll let Riley Lang on. Apology. Bill, they're saying tonight that um, it's unlikely that Timo Werner is going to leave. Germany full stop when, when is, so the more or is pointing Munich. out that Bayern Munich he's going to Bayern or he's going to Dortmund because yeah. they've just got a wedge of money no, from fucking th- Chelsea I think Bayern Munich I yeah. think he could but because the, the wages but uh, he won't earn more he won't earn more at, at Dortmund, Dortmund than, he would, than he would at Leipzig so it comes down to who's most likely to win the title when he goes there and I would say if Dortmund win it this year he's more likely to win it with Bayern Munich the following yeah season. they might shift Lewandowski on at that point yeah. to, to finally move it's not on. Muller you're probably looking at that they'll move on yeah true but well Bayern might have a big rebuilding and you know what and Bayern they have there's no guarantee rebuilding. I know they have the ability they have the financial capacity to go and do it every five or six years just a big mm. fuck off we're going to take the five best players in the league and buy mm. them all but they they're every, in a position so they're in a position now whereby they've bought some players into central midfield that haven't really done the business so to speak mm-hmm. and their players up front are aging they still have Rebri they mm-hmm. still have do they still have Robin as well mm-hmm. yep so they've Robin and Rebri Lewandowski and Muller that's that's not a fucking young it's a very experienced and and cute and crafty and capable um front lineup um but it's not got youth, it's not got pace on its side anymore to an extent. Do you think um, you're talking about money, Phil, with, with regards to Werner? I think Liverpool can pay Werner what, what he wants. Yeah, I don't think, <coughs> I don't think it's just money. German players like staying in Germany. If he's, if he's at Bayern Munich, the he's in... F- though. I don't know, I, I think there's a, there's a part of it that if he wants to stay in Germany, it's because he's also looking at... The him, national team. Money and the national team. And yeah. if he's at Bayern Munich, he's more or less cementing his... Starting position in the German. Yeah, if he's doing team. well for Bayern, he's starting for Germany. Yeah, yeah. he's the German that's number nine, works. and that's the yeah. way it works. Yeah. And that's where he's probably looking at. It's not just about getting say 150 no, grand or 160 grand at Liverpool. You have to remember we're paying that bit of fake as well. So yeah, Plus, but, but there's the other side of it as well. He has to come to Liverpool and displace one of that front three, whereas he's going to Bayern probably as a replacement. They're building around yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is the next so, wave, isn't it? Listen, he, he's he's a good player from the bits I've seen of him, but. He's not someone you're looking at going, I can't believe we can't get our hands on him. Mm, the price is around 26 million, which is, if you believe it, but I don't know. The Who news knows? tonight was interesting though, wasn't it? Like, why is it Why is it 36 million? Here's the question, right? For the which? price is around 36 million. Pulisic just went for 60 million. For 57. For Werner. For Werner. Yeah. Because he's, out of, I, think the, I think they set the price because he's only got 12 months left on his contract. But so had Pulisic and he just went yeah. for 60 million. But I, think but there's a, but I think there's already a deal in place. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. So, so people saying, "Oh, he's you could get him for this." It's ridiculous. I think it's a case. Or maybe he has a Toby all the world thing where I can go for twenty five. Or the maybe comes. knows. Maybe nobody knows. Or maybe it's just, just shy. Maybe people just make up bollocks <laughs> to get tweets just and fucking like. Klopp is sticking to the line that he, they're not signing anyone in the window. Yeah, yeah well, right. like that he said that all the time. Can we get to that bit? Of the new was it, who was it? Coutinho. tonight. United are in talks with the Manchester yeah, well, the, the Evening thing, News. If the Manchester Barcelona Evening News came so, out today and threw it back and said Coutinho's going nowhere one of their presidents I know but I'm just saying to you yeah, like no he's the sporting director or, or something well, there's about 52 exactly. presidents at Barcelona well, can, can I say something if, if, yeah. if Coutinho is in talks to go to United right mm-hmm. yeah does that mean that the money that Barcelona owes for Coutinho comes from United um, no Barcelona pay us doesn't matter what Barcelona do like th- that's that'd be like Barcelona selling fucking Dem- Dembele to United and using that money to pay us it's, it, these deals are all structured over the term of the contract they always are like you know when you see Jesus, Jesus. yeah but you know when you see like um, oh, 100 million and they gave it up front they didn't have fuck give it up front they gave they gave 30 up front and they paid the rest 70 over 5 years the bigger question for me would be and alright Steve said Barcelona have said no way and I can't see Coutinho leaving Barcelona after I genuinely believe year. they change their manager before he leaves yeah and uh, Coutinho is a top class player and used properly in a Barcelona side he, he could be outrageous but within the next two or three years Xavi and Iniesta will be gone out of that team well Iniesta's gone already Iniesta's gone. <laughs> Joking, you fucking no, spastic. Well, no, I'm just making sure because we're, we're way behind in that stream. Do you know what I mean? I'm just trying to make sure. Javi's gone two years for Rudy, Rudy's sake. just had to drop it on the ball yeah. there in the last minute. But uh, no, I think Coutinho's top class. The bigger question for me would be if 
if it came around that Coutinho was looking to... Um, That's not good. Hamstring issue for Hullover. Coutinho, if Coutinho was looking to uh, get out, or they were looking to get rid of him, should we be back in for him? No. Would you? If Coutinho was available. Oh, yeah. If Coutinho was available tomorrow, for argument's sake... <laughs> A hundred million. For I just should, throw a number on it. Should or are we likely to be? No, well, what I'm, in your opinion, if Coutinho was available, forget how much it is, just it's financially right. viable. If it was financially viable and the Which player was available be. and he wanted to come back to Liverpool, I would have him back in a happy. So would I. Right. But I think he pissed Klopp off so much that yeah. he wouldn't have him anywhere near that side yeah. again. He's, no, he's never coming back. Mm. As long as Klopp is at that club, I can't say. Like, Klopp doesn't necessarily, has made it clear time and time again, he doesn't really want to sign players who he managed before, who he got on with, who didn't mm. fucking angle for moves. Mm. Now, this is what the whole thing about the goat. Goats has the, all the hallmarks of a Coutinho for me in how he angled to get out of Dortmund and go to mm. Munich. Yeah. And people seem to have a fucking short memory of what a snake Coutinho was towards the end. Ah. His fake injuries, his his publicly telling the dressing room, telling his teammates, I'm off to Barcelona this season, lads, yeah. regardless. And just being a and general then Bar- And then Barcelona leaked the thing. Yeah, early. it was a, it was a complete think. fucking PR setup yeah, between was... his camp and Barcelona, acting the absolute bollocks to fucking destabilise our club. And we go on to the Champions League final. Why would you want him back? Footballing ability, fine, okay. But, but then that, that's but, it. See, that's the only thing I'd look but, at. Because so go and spend 100 or 120 million on players who are as good as him. And there are other players out there who are as good. Mm. Christian Eriksen's as good as Coutinho. Yeah. So, so you said, you're telling me Daniel Levy doesn't let Eriksen go for 70 or 80 million. I'd rather see us do that. And you're weaking, Real Madrid, you weaken, but you're weaking a rival and you strengthen yourself. I, I, I was the very one that said it a couple of I know you did. Um, but I'm saying there's other Christian Eriksons out there as well. Go and get Marco Royce if his injuries so you don't, are finally behind him. So the, if, if Lovren is out for an extended spell with a hamstring injury, well, it's, it's generally about this time of the season. I mean, he misses about six to eight games anyway. It's, it's he when he goes home for skiing. Yeah, something like that. Oh, Croatia does it um, Anyway, if he's gone. Is there a concern? Well, I suppose it depends on how close to go fitness. Matip's a week away, and Joe Gomez is two but weeks away. I put this in the group. I asked you, and I ask it again publicly. We are then putting our eggs in the basket of two phenomenally injury prone players. Well, Joe Gomez, Joe Gomez isn't injury prone. He's been unlucky with impact injuries. <laughs> He's not injury prone. He's just been unlucky to be injured well, for two seasons. Injury prone is when you're prone to pick up injury prone injuries that your body your body breaks down on you. Somebody Which has been two seasons. Up. But someone's smashing you. No, That's like saying he's he injury prone because he, he was he in did. a fucking car he crash. He's he done a crucial ligament. What's that? In training. He's done a crucial ligament in training. Twice. In impact. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone broke his leg. And, bef- and after that, well, he's, he's also on, picked on, up on, blocks as well. Was, so this everyone, season, this everyone, season, hold on a minute. Now, hold on, I'm not having this shit argument. Oh yeah, now, hold on a minute. You can you can yeah, say I'll, that. I will say. I'm it. Gonna I will fucking say. End your argument. You let it out anyway. But yeah, listen. He he was extremely unfortunate with crucial ligaments. He's done extremely well to come back from them, in my opinion. He he broke his leg in a tackle. You know what I mean? This isn't this isn't like the Lana that is in the phenomenal shape he's in. Goes out onto Melbourne for a run around and comes back and says, "I have a knock." Do you know what I mean? Exactly. My, that's that's my, an injury my, 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 my is injury my bigger, worry, my bigger worry is, right? With his fucking Lovren, no, cycle. Lovren goes down with, he has an illness. He has a fucking viral infection. He has a throat infection. He has a chest infection. Matip is not up to the physicality of the league. They would be way bigger concerns to me than Joe Gomez would Absolutely. ever be. Would ever be. I'll put it to you this way. Dejan Lovren goes down tonight with a crucial ligament. He will not play for Liverpool again. He Who just, won't? Dejan Lovren would not play with Liverpool again if he went down to with a crucial ligament. Oh, with a ligament injury. Sorry, he, he sorry. He would not uh, play yeah, again yeah, yeah. because he hasn't got it in him to come back and be bigger and stronger. Do you know there. that the period that but we've this just is my point. Sorry, this on. is my point. The, period, the, the period, period that we've just witnessed mm. was Gomez's longest run without an injury for Liverpool. Oh, yeah. But look at the injuries. Hang on a second. He was a kid not getting games as well. So, so was it his longest period of games without an injury, or was it his longest period? No, of because when he when, when, when he signs for Liverpool, he comes straight into the team, and he <laughs> he, 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 was, he, he held seat. he held down the left back position. Does a crucial half the season. Goes out there when Achilles tendons problem when he comes back in July fifteen. He's out to November sixteen, mm. and then he has an ankle injury in March this year. And he's out till April, and then which is a broken. Then we have, he broke his ankle. Then we have ankle which surgery. Is what meant he missed then we the have an, cup. then we have ankle surgery. Right now, was it didn't break? But how did these ankle injuries come about? What was the ankle injury? 
It was an ankle injury. What was the ankle injury? It wasn't a broken ankle. What was the ankle injury? Whatever. You don't have a fucking clue because you're reading I, it off I a website. Care. You it don't. doesn't fucking make a difference. It does make and a now, difference. Because so if somebody broke his so fucking is, ankle, it wasn't on, a fucking. Hang on. Now we have a fractured leg. Prone. But hang on a second. There's a list of injuries that's kept the player out for the best part of three years, and you're telling me he's not injury prone. Yeah. No. And a Matip falls over in a match. Falls over. Wasn't hit or anything. Falls over and breaks his collarbone. So if you were driving Matip along, be, Matip, I'd be amazed if Matip comes back and is able to play after three weeks with a broken collarbone. If you're, 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 you're along cycling and along and you get a bang you. of a fucking car you're a and, you're, and you break your back and yeah. you're out for eighteen months and you finally are rehabilitated and you're walking over a bridge and some dopey cunt comes along in a fucking van and gives you a smack of it and you break That's your hip. Does that is, make you injury prone? Football is littered with players who have weak bones. My no, no, my point. Be. I'm my sorry. I'm sorry. Be. I completely disagree with you. Matip is Matip, fucking injury Matip, prone Matip and Lovren, Gomez on. is injury prone Listen, whether you like it or not he's injury impact prone impact injuries when you miss three injuries, years right? with injuries you're injury fucking yes. prone you're injury prone because of injury impact prone. it's not that you're running around injury you pull a prone Stop injury prone what's he just showing for? injury prone listen I'm more worried about centre halves you're putting your feet in two injury prone footballers they, they, they flew and all this sort of shit that's that's way more worrying who do you start against Brighton? Fabinho and Van Dijk Okay, you do start Simple. With Fabinho and Van Dijk. It's not even a if question. Matip is is no. he's not ready. back. Klopp no. said he won't be back. Hey, players Brighton. coming back in and just making it, just about making it, and they're way off it. And just play Fabinho in there. It's disappointing. Fabinho, Van Dijk, Robertson, it'll be Henderson, Trent. Genie, and fucking Milner. It's somewhere away. Away. It's away. Away. In Brighton's ground. Henderson, Genie, Shakiri. No, I think it's. I think he goes Henderson, uh, Genie, Milner. He gives Milner a chance to make up for tonight. No, don't play that fucking midfield three again. These aren't. But he's, he they might. Will. No, Henderson, Henderson, Wijnaldum, Shakiri, Arcade, and play the front three. And don't act the bollocks with this four-two-three-one shot against teams that are just going to sit back against you. You don't need it. You just don't need it. But that's what we have been playing against them all season. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Just go out and beat them. The only games we haven't won though, we're playing. The, I don't been, care. Yeah, but that's because we're under the form of the XGA. <laughs> I right. care about fucking three points. That's all That's I all I care about, about, yeah. I don't One care. Don't, don't care. give a fuck. I take a scaldy fucking Chris Hughes. Last, last year, Chris Hughes last, year <laughs> last year, we played three at the back and when Yaldon played as was one of the back. Shan and Lovren were in our back three. Yep. Yeah. What a three. Mental. Absolutely off the charts and we fucking ran a muck on them. I know. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then your man, what was his name? That fucking idiot up front, Glen Murray. Yeah. Misses a great chance. Mignolet with the save of the season. You want to see it? Well, and uh, it did. gets cleared out. I think someone flicks around. Coutinho gets on and plays in this player play. Oh, I was fucking great. Well, great with you. Yeah. yeah. Coutinho will start the weekend. So would you just play Van Dijk <laughs> with all the midfielders? No, it's just a pack four. Just put Fabinho in there. Pick three. Listen, if he plays 4 2 3 1, he can play Wijnaldum. Henderson. Put fucking Kate in front of him. That's 4 2. So you're not playing Shakiri? 2 boys. Okay, there are Shakiri. I don't want to see Wijnaldum, Henderson, and fucking. Um, Milner in that Milner. Tree. No. Milner's legs have gone. He needs to fuck off now for a week or two. He needs to piss off. He's already relax. been gone for a few weeks with injury. No, but well, like he is. He, he is being back off with injury. He came back the other night. He, I thought he was awful against City. He hasn't been great for most of the season. And he has been good. He has been all right, but he just think, looks off. For me, it. anyway. And it, Henderson needs to get his head out of his hole. I don't care if it's Scotty 1 0. We just need to win this game. Of course yeah. you do. Just need to win this game. Just the city don't play. It puts us back to seven points. Yeah, yeah. it puts the pressure back on them. I think our next two we play before them, and, and then, then they play, play on before Monday us. night. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I yeah. think we just need to win this game, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Doesn't and matter two how fairly we do. easy games over the next two games as well. Yeah. Huddersfield's away, and, and Brighton. Are, I'm going to be straight. I think Brighton are probably going to think to themselves. Do you know what? After what's going on, there's probably an opportunity for us to. Yeah, it's a good time to be playing Liverpool. Yeah. They won't come out with us. They'll try to sit back and potentially catch us on the break. They'll yeah. do what they try. They'll I mean, try to do what City did to us. Or they'll try... No, they haven't got the quality to do that. They'll try to do what Arsenal done. They, they done to Arsenal. And they were unfortunately they went 1-0 down a half to Arsenal and Arsenal handed them back way back into a long ball. And your man, what's his name? Lichstein are fucking all over the shop. But they were very open against Arsenal. They could have been 3 or 4 now. We'll no, leave no, the no, in-depth analysis to the top table. What's your um, prediction? 3-1. To us, love a three one, love a three yeah. one, yeah, the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steam special. Yeah. The man Matty Ryan had a great game against us last year. Oh, here we really that's the one, Matty Ryan. That's the one, Matty. 
So I think, I think it'll be one all draw. I think we're in our wobble time. <laughs> Here we go. We're we'll having we'll our wobble. No, I think uh, three one. We will wobble, but they don't fall down. Right, that's been the club. That has been Stephen Daly. That has been Gav Doyle. That has been me, your host, Phil Casey. It has been in association with Reds Bears. Uh, the Sean Cox appeal stuff is out on Wednesday, hopefully, and we'll be we'll be back next Monday with the club yep. on Thursday night we'll have the cup table out and then on Saturday join Gav live with Matt and probably Steve-O to discuss the outputs of the Brighton and Hove Albion the 3-1 games. win one all drop um, and watch the heads fall everywhere if that is the case anyway that's been it I've been your host God bless